Siru, who is director of uh, FIRO, uh, a research institute for post-harvest processing and, uh, and food technology based in Lagos in, uh, in Nigeria. And uh, Dr. Nisola Mabungu, uh, who, who was uh, a researcher at uh, ITA and who is now the, the director of uh, Cassava Processing Company based in, uh, in the Democratic Republic of Congo. So we welcome to, to the three panel, to the three keynote speakers. Uh, I think we, we we can start with the presentation of handouts. Okay, thank you very much, Thierry. Um, I'll try to share my screen. I hope. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Okay, welcome everybody. Um, it's a privilege to have this opportunity to uh, give the keynote address at this workshop on flash dryer innovations for cassava starch and flour at small scale. My name is Abbas Adebayo. I work for IITA as a coordinator of TART Cassava Compact. TART is Technologies for African Agricultural Transformation. I'm based in Tanzania. Um, this uh, workshop is part of a strategy to support small-scale flash dryer manufacturing in Africa and Latin America. It is also a strategy to foster the dissemination and use of the technology uh, flash drying. Uh, Can you hear me? Translator, can I continue? Yeah. Is everything okay? Good. That, yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Efficient drying is vital to the industrialization of the cassava sector. Flash dryers are economical uh, for cassava drying. Pour l'industrialisation du secteur de manioc, les matières, les matières de séchage sont économiques pour le séchage, pour le processus de séchage du manioc en Thaïlande et au Vietnam. Uh, we need to, uh, please, um, uh, you need to activate the select the option to be a uh, translator, but now you are in, in the panel section. Are you referring to me? No, no, no. I'm talking with Frederica. Okay. Where? But Alejandro. Normally it should be automatic. Yeah, but we, we can hear the translation. Uh, I think she's supposed to be in the French channel. Yeah, yeah something is wrong. Um, can you switch for her? Uh, can you please continue, Dr. Awas? Okay. So in, Thailand, in Thailand and Vietnam, large scale, cassava, uh, large scale capacity what? flash dryers are common, uh, usually more than 200 tons of product per day. In Africa, processors demand for small scale flash dryers. Uh, many of these processors uh, prefer uh, capacities below 100 tons of product per day. Therefore, equipment manufacturers, processors, research institutions, private investors in Africa, especially in Nigeria, have been developing the technology for small scale flash drying to expand cassava utilization and provide opportunities for smallholder farmers to sell um, their commodity. However, in many cases, the configurations and operating conditions of flash dryers were found to be suboptimal and resulted in high energy use and high operating costs. 
The high costs lead to losses because high quality cassava flour and starch production margins are very small. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I would uh, like to go through some um, historical perspective of flash dryer development in Africa. Uh, in the 1980s, uh, private equipment manufacturers in Nigeria, such as engineer Ogunobi, Addis Engineering in Lagos and others were already involved in building flash dryers. Uh, during the same period, the Federal Institute of Industrial Research was using a flash dryer fabricated by the Institute for producing soy yogi, a mixture of non defatted soybean and starch from, uh, from fermented maize. My own contact with flash dryer was first at Firo in 1993. And at that time also, there are very few existing private sector uh, own flash dryers. And most of those are used uh, to dry cassava starch, fufu, and ogi. Flash dryer was not used for high quality cassava flour at that time. By year 2000, IIT tested the suitability of flash dryers for high quality cassava flour production at a company in Lagos, Femtech Starch Factory. It was a good experience for me um, at that time. I was already at IIT and we were working on high quality cassava flour technology. Uh, we, we were using sun drying and there were a lot of problems associated with sun drying of cassava to produce high quality cassava flour. So we tested the use of flash dryer for high quality cassava flour uh, under the cassava bread project at that time led by Dr. Mpoko Bukanga. By 2002, we had uh, a workshop at IIT in Nebadum. Uh, cassava competitiveness workshop. And we presented the results that we got in the test of high quality cassava for uh, drying using flash dryer. Uh, the Raw Material Research and Development Council of Nigeria was encouraged and decided to support and also encourage IITA to advance the study on flash dryers for high quality cassava flour processing. By 2003, IIT began to facilitate teams of engineers from academia, research centers, private equipment manufacturers to conduct research and improve flash dryer manufacturing capacity. That was done during the, uh, the Cassava Mosaic Disease Project and Cassava Enterprise Development Project financed by the government of Nigeria and Nigeria oil companies. These projects were led by Dr. Alfred Dixon and he led the initiative to support uh, equipment manufacturers to expand their capacity uh, to produce uh, flash dryers in Nigeria. And some of those uh, equipment fab fabricators that were involved, uh, Niji Lucas, Peak Products, and others. Um, flash dryer utilization and development started spreading to Africa uh, from there on. And of course, in Latin America, uh, flash dryers were already there uh, being used. In 2008, CAVA, Adding Value for Africa, further investigated how to improve flash dryer designs, mostly in Nigeria. And CAVA was led by NRI and the Federal University of Agriculture, Abelkuta in Nigeria. In 2009, the use of flash dryers for high quality cassava flour processing started spreading through the uh, Common Fund for Commodity Projects. Uh, small, smake, small scale cassava processing projects that uh, we were managing at IITA at that time. Uh, flash dryers were taken to Madagascar, Zambia, Tanzania uh, under this project. And at the same time, efforts were on in DRC, in DRC uh, for use of flash dryers. Between 2013 and 2016, the current team of RTV scientists from SIAD, SIRAD, and IIT conducted comprehensive research on the energy efficiency of some of these flash dryers with the following key achievements. The first thing that the uh, RTV scientists did was to develop the protocol for the diagnosis of flash dryer performance, that is mass and energy balance in collaboration with the University of Wuhan in Germany, particularly working with Professor Joachim Muller who gave us uh, the technical assistance uh, with respect to the tools required for measuring temperature, relative humidity, 
air flow rates in flash dryers at every point um, of the flash dryer from heat exchanger uh, to the point where products are introduced to the flash dryer and through the drying tunnel up to the point of the separation of dried products uh, from uh, moist, moist air. And then that protocol became very useful in the subsequent work that the, the team did. So the RTB scientists continued uh, working on flash dry improvement by first uh, benchmarking the operating conditions and performance of flash dryers in seven countries, Thailand, Vietnam, China, Nigeria, Tanzania, Colombia, Paraguay. Computer simulation models of flash drying to calculate optimum dimensions and operating conditions at different production capacities. And the team produced and uh, produced the design and blueprints of a small scale optimized flash dryer with a capacity of about 100 kilograms of products per hour. Uh, by 2017, the team constructed and commissioned the optimized small scale flash dryer at SEAT in Colombia. Test dryers under various conditions validated that the dryer met the specifications and achieved the drying to the required moisture content of 10 to 13%. In 2018, the team demonstrated the use of the optimized flash dryer to produce commercial cassava starch. The study confirmed that actual performance of the optimized flash dryer is within 10% of the predictions of the computer model. This showed that the model was reliable and could be a tool for designing flash dryers of any capacity up to half a ton of products per hour. The optimized flash dryer uses about 1700 to 1800 megajoules of energy per ton of starch, which fulfills the overall objective of achieving small scale flash drying with energy use equal to that of large scale flash dryers. Then at that stage, we got to the point of having to scale this innovation. Fortunately, the Root and Tuba program led by Dr. Graham Thierry established the scaling fund to foster the scaling of promising RTB innovations, generate evidence around scalability of innovations and improve scaling strategies, approaches, and tools. So this project, scaling approach for flash drying, cassava starch, and flour at small scale was financed under the RTB scaling fund. CIAD, CIRAD, and IITA were the main organizations, uh, uh, research centers uh, leading the project in Nigeria, DRC, and Colombia. But we had two other contributing CGIR flash the cassava processing flash, flash project and the scaling RTB agri food systems, uh, system innovations um, flash project. Co financing for this project was uh, provided to facilitate private sector investment and adoption by IITA TAT cassava compact project. And there are a number of national institutions and private sector members uh, in the project. In Nigeria, we had FIRO, we had FUNAI, we have equipment fabricators and processors. In DRC, there are equipment fabricators involved in these projects as well as processors. And in Colombia, we're uh, collaborating with the private sector, Agrolanos. Presentation of important results obtained during the scaling projects would be done at this workshop. We will share experience from Nigeria, uh, we will share experience of engineers and processors from Nigeria and DRC who were trained in Colombia on flash dryer design and operation. There will be presentations on the recent innovations in flash dryer technology. Cassava processors will share experience in the use of flash dryers during this workshop. There will be presentations of key components for efficient flash dryer system. And we will introduce participants to the online design tools for assessing the technical and economic feasibility of flash dryers. Ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> I would like to appreciate the efforts of my colleagues in the project led by Dr. Thierry Tran, 
who have been consistent since 2013 in investigating the optimal parameters for the manufacture of efficient small scale flash dryers and finding appropriate scaling approaches to expanding flash dryer adoption. The scaling project is ending, but there is more work to be done together. The CGR team and partner institutions will remain active. We will collaborate with research institutions to conduct research and train students. We will be available to support processors to diagnose their flash trials and make improvements where necessary. We will continue to support equipment fabricators through knowledge sharing, training, and technical assistance. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish to thank you for listening. Thank you. Back to you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much. Uh, please, Dr. Asif. Yeah. Good Dr. Bola, we cannot hear your presentation. You cannot hear it. Is it the recording? Oh, please, can you play the recording from your site? I don't know how to cover this, but I will, I will try. Hmm? I, I will try. Please. I can help you if you want. I can. Uh, Alejandro, yeah, if you can. Uh, I can yeah. share my screen. Eh? Please, see it. session. My name is Marco Achuko I
on the two of the hobo. No, no, I, I don't have the the the, the Dr. Bola presentation download. Uh, can can you present uh, with the audio, Dr. Bola? Maybe you can talk. Can okay. You... Oh, I can talk with it. Okay, no problem. Exactly. Please. Okay. 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 I'll do that. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes. Andrew, can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear Yes, you. can. Okay. Clearly. Very well. Okay. Good afternoon. Bonsoir. Colleagues uh, and participants in this workshop. My name Je is... Well, I'm Bolale Ashiru, a director from Federal Institute of Industrial Research. I'm going to talk about the development of flagrants in Nigeria, the journey so far. Actually, this project that we are talking about today is targeted at HQCF and starch production. And all this uh, federal required drying. So federal dry and drying methods are available, but pneumatic drying system is important. Having an efficient flat dryer has been a major bottleneck in the production of HQ safe and starch in Nigeria. All the design of local flat dryers are not well efficient and of low capacity. This necessitates further research into flat drying technology. Research and development of flat drying in Nigeria this paper focuses on our attempt to have an efficient locally fabricated flash dryer. I'll start with history of flash dryer. Okay. In the 80s, developed a flash dryer targeted at drying soil, and this flash dryer was designed, fabricated, and installed in Nigeria. And that stores, I mean, starts the beginning of commercialization of flash dryer in Nigeria. With Ogunu be complete technology limited and peak products dominating the flat dryer market in Nigeria. Uh, like earlier said by um, uh, Dr. Abbas, the first trial uh, on flat dryer drying of HQ cell was advertised by IITA researchers with very encouraging results. Who also acquired a peak product flat dryer to dry HQ in 2002 with good results. At the commencement of integrated Canada project initiated by IIT in 2004, FADRA became more popular. Engineers and fabricators were invited to IIT by the project leader then, Professor Latif Sonny, to deliver on periods, machines, and the improvement. This is to support the new project on cassava processing. The outcome of brainstorming session with peak products led to a new fashion of locally fabricated FADRA. Then they are using um, galvanized seed, mixed with my seed to uh, produce flies there. But after the meeting that day, they are able to use um, stainless steel to fabricate flies there. Since then, the flies there fabrication tribe with many stores in Nigeria and other African countries. It's worth saying that during that period, between uh, that, during that period, and five years to that time, 33 plaza was supplied to Niger Delta region by quick products. Also, Nigeria exported plaza to IIT, Common Fund Commodity Project in East Africa, as said by uh, Dr. Abbas the other time in his presentation.
So also due to the uh, the, uh, the project expanded and more plazas are requested. So the other players like Niji Lucas and uh, Nobex were brought in. During that period, Niji Lucas was able to install 18 flags there for the IIT project in different locations in Nigeria. However, it was observed that the existing flags are not energy efficient and of low capacity. Most of them are uh, below one ton in eight hours. And that does not really pay the, uh, the processor because of uh, the, the cost of production is high due to intake of diesels and so on. So the, then the cost is also very, very high so, and out of reach of processors. So this was a big concern to IIT. And then a design team, a flat earth design team was set up in total by IIT. Engineers were selected from FIRO, University of Portaco, University of Baden, RMRDC, ADP, Edo State, IIT, and Sede Enugu with local fabricators to work on a new design of flat earth. The team works for months at different locations, sponsored by, funded by IIT, raw uh, material, RITEP, Jebu, Enugu State, and a new flat dryer was finally designed. The fabrication and installation of this fire was sponsored by Godlogo Farm, and the flag that was installed in Ibudu, in Godlogo Farm in Ibudu, Cross River State. In this design, some level of automation were introduced on the dryer to ensure flexibility on capacity of the dryer, also to control the volatility. Features of the flag dryer include two passes each exchanger, the role of feeding mechanism with graduator, the role of integrated motor control center incorporated with previous electrical electronic devices like sensors and so on. Then the drawings are done uh, with uh, AutoCAD software, especially the area of uh, sheet forming. A software was also used to produce the cyclone, the one developed by Kuya et al. in 2006 to ensure that. Uh, we have, uh, uh, we develop a precise cyclo. You can see the uh, AutoCAD drawing of the flash dryer, and you can see the burner, the heat exchanger, the feeding mechanism that deliver product on the uh, at point theory before it moves through the drying tube to the cyclo, where it is now uh, discharged as a product. After evaluation, the flat earth feeding rate is, it was found to be 702 kg per hour with product output of 500 kg per hour. The fuel consumption was 13 liter per hour with product vinyl moisture content of 5 to 7 percent from wet mass of 25 percent moisture content. The total consumption was 13 liters. Conclusively, the Golugo flat dryer spot improvement of flat dryer fabrication in Nigeria more fabricators emerge with improved heat exchanger and feeding mechanism. And that is when you that now see our flash fabricators, flash including the feeding mechanism, the flash air. Earlier design the we have is and feeding, which is not uniform and, and promotes low capacity. But with, with uh, metered feeding, the capacity was able to increase. So and it's also triggered for that work by NRI led cover on what I did more work was done by cover and NRI, uh, which I'm not, uh, I don't have time to report here. Today, different models of flash dry are produced locally for Nigeria and Africa. However, recent study of mass and energy balance in flash dry uh, by adequate dryers are not energy efficient. Hence, we need to develop an energy efficient flash dryer and of course, in 2019, on mon project by two, the IIT, Syrah, and the electric fabricators. The energy efficient flat has been fabricated and installed in Puyo 
et le président pour collaboration avec SIAT, l'État SIAT et les fabricateurs sélectionnés. I specifically acknowledge SIAT for providing the fund that we use for the uh, design for the project. IITA and SIAT for uh, the support, the technical support. Fuel engineers and technicians and technology team and the fabricators that work with them, local fabricators that work with them. We have about five fabricators working with, them, with us. Then I would like to uh, acknowledge the first design team in 2006, led by Professor Ayokuye. IITA, uh, RMRDC, that uh, funded it for the logo and uh, Ritep debut of the state. Thank you for listening. Over to Thank you, Chairman. You. Thank you so much, Dr. Bola. Uh, please welcome Dr. Nsola Mahungu from La Yuka. Can you please start your presentation, Dr. Mahungu? Okay, thank you. Uh, I would like to see my screen. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Bonsoir, tout le monde. Good afternoon, sir. Okay. okay. Uh, I'll talk. Are you seeing my screen? Not yet. No, we can't. No. You can't see my slides? No. Oh. I think Alejandro, uh, can you can you show the slide? Uh, I have only I have only two slides. Maybe I can talk because there are no pictures in my slides. Yeah, that seems to be a problem. Okay, yeah. I'll be talking about uh, introducing flash dryers in DR Congo. All right. We put this together with uh, Mr. Lukombo. As uh, we know, cassava is very important in the country. We are shooting now about 40 million tons per year. This means that the crop is gaining importance as industrial crop. We are producing flour for food, in fermented flour for bread, and the starch for food and the industry, mainly the pepper industry. So mm -hmm. this means that the productivity constraint that we had before were adding a, again processing uh, constraints. Productive. And the, the processing constraints are mainly the drying machines. As uh, Dr. Abba said, there were some attempts to have the machines in Congo, mainly the flash dryer. But unfortunately, they could not make it as done in Nigeria and other countries. We have some local efforts for fabrication of flash dryers. By companies like Acomer and Benefoot. But the breakthrough came in 2016 when IITA introduced from Nigeria to DR Congo using the FDB SAD project, introduced a flash dryer to Bukang Alonso that made by Niji, and the technicians came to install the flash dryer. From there, the local technicians started fabricating flash dryers 
mainly the, the company called Agrimac. He started by rehabilitating the fresh dry that was at Layuka, but not functioning. So it was rehabilitated by Agrimac. And then c c right, right now we have about four fresh dryers in the country. Two in Kinshasa, one in the eastern part in Bukavu, and one being fabricated with a new specification following the, the meeting and the, the study tour made in Colombia by this project of RTB, uh, CIRAD, and IIT and CIRAD. Okay. So now, uh, looking at the importance of processing cassava, there are a lot of interest yes, for flash so dry in the country and also it's in neighboring country like Angola and Congo. So this is what I had to say. And thank you, you said DB and the World Bank for sponsoring Cassava research for development in DR Congo. And thank you to everybody for listening. The chair, back to you. Thank you, Dr. Mahungu. Now, uh, please, uh, Dr. Thierry. Dr. Thierry will present the, the next presentation is a recent innovation in flash dryer technology. Dr. Thierry, please. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah. We, we well, maybe a short stop, a short break. Uh, I, I'd like to check if the translation uh, in French is working or not for, for the audience because we will have some technical trouble setting it up. Any feedback on this? Okay, so we'll assume that it's, uh, it's working. Um, um, not sure it's working, can you? Uh, can you try to speak on the French channel? Yes. Yeah, we still hear you on the English channel, I think. Yes, I'm very well. Okay. But it's not so clear. The microphone is, there are some noise in the room. Okay. Uh, as, as the time is running, I will, uh, I will continue with, the, with my presentation. Uh, as, as Alejandro mentioned, I'd like to uh, give a big thank you to the three keynote uh, speakers for their contributions and the historical perspective that they have given on the development of flash dryers over several decades. So, uh, in this presentation, I good good morning, good uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, in this presentation, uh, I will give uh, an overview of the RTD project uh, that was mentioned that has been running since 2013. And uh, yeah, we and uh, we with the. Uh, uh, and uh, with the conclusions that we have reached so far on how to upgrade uh, existing flash dryers or how to construct uh, new flash dryers with even better energy efficiency and lower production costs. 
Okay, uh, th this is a reminder of the of the program of the workshop. Uh, I, I will try to be uh, short because the, the time uh, we are a bit uh, behind time. Je vais essayer d'être court parce que le temps est imparti. Just, just as a reminder, to, today is the first day uh, of the workshop, and we have a second session uh, tomorrow to discuss technical details, uh, the technical aspects of the flash dryer a bit, uh, bit more in detail. Mardi, nous allons faire une petite présentation, et demain, les thèmes, nous avons présenté avec les thèmes techniques. So, tomorrow is uh, same time and uh, same, uh, same link to join the, the Zoom meeting. Thank you. Demain, c'est la même heure. Le même lieu. OK. So the, the, the main findings, uh, the, the, the main steps of the project were to first assess the situation with current flash dryers. And that was back in 2013 to 2015. Uh, then uh, we identified uh, ways to improve uh, flash dryers, in particular regarding the, the length of the pipe, the improvement of liquid exchanger, and so on. Oh, and we also developed a business plan. de manioc et l'amidon, the thème technique. Les mots clés sur le design de la petite échelle, le séchoir de petite échelle et les équipements reliés, les échanges de chaleur, etc., le business plan. Les mots clés the, sur les uh, Sur l'opération du secteur flash. Frédérica, uh, oui. I think we, we cannot continue the translation because I, I have two sounds. Um, have two. Okay. Sorry, yeah. thank you. Uh, okay, the, those tools uh, that we have developed on uh, technical aspects and uh, financial planning of uh, fire investment uh, are collected in uh, on this website, flashdryer.fr. So the first, uh, okay, cassava is, a, is an important crop. Uh, cultivated across the tropics and the staple food for uh, millions of, uh, of people. Uh, it is uh, processed in different products such as gari, acheke, uh, flour, uh, baton de manioc, chikwange. And it is processed at different scales, so very, very small, to so like less than one ton of food per day, to to much larger uh, factories, up to 500, uh, 600 tons of, uh, of food uh, per day. Uh, in, uh, for, for the Fajaya projects, uh, it is relevant for two, uh, for two uh, products, powder products, the flour and the starch. So here is a summary of the, of the process of the steps to prepare flour and uh, starch. Uh, here are illustrations of uh, the size of processing with the, the different steps to produce uh, starch at this scale. So this is a factory in Thailand, uh, large scale, uh, able to, product, to produce up to 200 tons of starch per 24 hours. Uh, the main steps are to receive the cassava roots, to wash and peel, uh, rasping, uh, to reduce the, the roots into a mash. Uh, extraction and segregation to, to separate the starch from the fibers and then drying using the, the famous uh, flash dryer. Uh, in other countries, here is an example in Vietnam, we have exactly the same steps but at a much, much smaller scale. So with the reception of the roots, the washing, uh, rasping and extraction, uh, and then drying, uh, in this case, it's uh, air drying or sun, uh, sun drying. Uh, in the case of flour, it's uh, the, the steps are similar, except that uh, we do not have the separation of the fiber and the starch. So in the in the final products of flour, we have a mix of uh, fiber and, uh, and starch. 
uh, when we uh, analyzed the, the process of uh, start of our production, uh, we found that the drying steps represents uh, 70 to 80 percent of the total energy use of the factory. So if we want to decrease the, the production costs and improve the, the efficiency of the process, uh, we need to address the energy use in priority for drying because it's where the most of the energy use happens. Uh, this was the case in the various countries that we surveyed. Uh, the first cost of, uh, of processing is uh, buying the, the cassava root. Uh, this represents between 60 up to 90 percent of the costs here in Orange. And the energy costs are the second uh, highest uh, exp expenditure for processing, uh, representing between uh, one to two percent, up to uh, eleven percent, sometimes up to twenty percent of production costs. So energy efficiency is, is essential to reduce production costs and also to minimize uh, environmental impacts and to ensure a more sustainable development of cassava processing and cassava industries. Uh, at the moment, uh, and for the next few decades, the global population is projected to increase. So we will need to produce more food. Uh, cassava is a staple crop, so uh, we can expect the cassava uh, production to increase. So proportionally, the cassava processing and cassava industries will also expand and develop. So if if we continue with current technologies, the, the, the environmental footprint and the energy use of the cassava industry is going to increase exponentially. Uh, what we can do is try to improve and reintroduce uh, more efficient technologies uh, to reduce and to mitigate the, the increasing uh, costs and environmental impact uh, of the cassava industry. Uh, what we observed when we did the survey is the surveys in different countries is that large scale pass dryers are widely used and economically viable, whereas small scale pass dryers have a high energy consumption and cost of operation and are not uh, easy to use. The, the main question was is it possible to make small scale pass dryers with the same energy efficiency uh, and costs as large scale pass dryers? Uh, here is a reminder of the main components of uh, flash dryer. First, we have a hot air generator system uh, made of a burner and heat exchanger to produce the hot air. Then we have a feed system to mix the, the flour uh, into the flow of hot air. Uh, then we have the, the flash drying pipe uh, where the flour and the hot air circulate together. So that the water can evaporate from the flour into the hot air. And at the end, at the end, we have uh, cyclones to separate the flour products uh, through the bottom and the uh, humid air and the water vapor uh, from the top. Uh, the movement uh, from the heat exchanger all the way to the cyclones is uh, ensured by a blower, a big, a large fan, uh, sucking the air and keeping the air and the flour in movement through the, the dryer. Uh, in this drawing, the blower is located at the end. Uh, this is a negative pressure system. It can also be located at the beginning of the drying pipe, just after the, the feeder. In this case, uh, we, we talk about a positive pressure system. Uh, another key point we found uh, when we did the surveys uh, was that uh, there is no consensus uh, on the design of uh, of flash dryers. In different countries, we have very different shapes uh, of the dryers, of the pipes, uh, different lengths, uh, from 15 to 60 liters, different operating temperature, uh, different air velocities inside the tube. Uh, and so a, a wide uh, variations between models of flash dryers. Uh, here are some illustrations in Nigeria. Uh, with a capacity of two to four tons of uh, starch or flour uh, per day. Uh, in Thailand, with the large scale dryers, uh, typically 200 tons of product uh, per day. Uh, in Paraguay, uh, from the Brazil, Brazilian technology. Uh, here, uh, Swedish technology, uh, large scale. Uh, in Argentina, uh, an unusual design where the, the drying pipe is 
under the floor of the factory and then it goes up to the ceiling all the way to the to the cyclones. Uh, and here in Argentina, uh, another design. Uh, in terms of uh, dimensions uh, of the of the pipes, we have very different length. Uh, the smallest one can be 10 meter, 12 meter uh, long, uh, up to uh, 45, 50, 57 meters. Uh, we, we also have differences in diameters and uh, differences in capacity. Yeah, I, I want to highlight the, the total length of the pipe in particular with very large variations. Uh, we observe the high variability of operation, operating conditions, uh, in particular uh, in terms of uh, air to starch ratio. So the quantity of air injected in the dryer uh, in relation to the, to the quantity of starch, it goes from eight to 10 uh, kilograms of air, of air per kilogram of, uh, of product, up to 25, up to 40 kilograms of air per kilogram of product. And the temperature also varies a lot from 180, uh, or from 130 up to 180 uh, Celsius. Uh, something uh, important to note is that uh, the energy used per ton of product uh, can, can vary a lot as well, consequently. And when we have a higher temperature and a higher uh, and a smaller air to, uh, to product ratio, we have a lower uh, energy use and a better energy efficiency. Uh, comparing the small scale dryer and the large scale dryers, so what we found is that uh, large scale dryers, for example, in Thailand, have a, have a low energy use and are very efficient, whereas uh, small scale dryers tend to have higher energy use. In terms of costs, uh, that has a strong impact on, uh, on the operating operation cost. Uh, in the small, the large scale dryers cost about 25 to 30 dollars per ton of product to operate, and the small scale dryers can cost from 40 to 100 dollars per ton of product. So, of course, this makes uh, production at small scale much more difficult and expensive. So the main steps of the of the RTD project at flash dryers were, were to uh, develop a computer model to simulate flash drying and to understand exactly the, the technical aspect of flash drying. Then to design uh, a prototype uh, to validate the findings of the models and uh, and and to prove that we can uh, have a small scale dryer with a high energy efficiency, and then to, to test and validate that we have uh, that we achieve this high energy efficiency before uh, transferring to the to the private sector. Uh, what we found from the model is that uh, the pipe length is uh, is critical to ensure uh, uh, a low energy use. Uh, here uh, we have three uh, different uh, air speed, the energy use in function of the pipe length. You can see that uh, for uh, long uh, long pipes, uh, 30 to 40 meters, we have a low uh, energy use. In contrast, uh, if we have a short pipe, uh, in this example, 10 to 12 meters, uh, we have a much higher uh, energy use. And this is true, uh, whatever the, the air velocity in the in the drying pipe. So, to have a, a good energy efficient efficiency, uh, one one key aspect is to uh, have a long pipe, even for small scale dryers. Even if the capacity of the dryer is only one ton, two tons of, uh, of product per day, uh, we need a long pipe, typically uh, at least twenty five meter long. Uh, then, from, from that standing, uh, other conditions emerge. Uh, the particles of the of product need to stay long enough in the pipe to, to evaporate the water. Uh, we found that the optimum time is between 1.5 to 2 seconds. Uh, for, for a drying pipe of 25 to 30 meters and a velocity of 10 to 12 meters, uh, which is necessary to keep the particles in suspension and moving in the, in the pipe, uh, that means we need a minimum of 20 to 25 uh, meter uh, 
for the, the length of the pipe. Uh, also, uh, in terms of temperature, uh, the higher the temperature, the more efficient the dryer. Uh, so the optimum is between 180 to 210 Celsius. Uh, higher than that, we there is a risk of burning the product. So we, we have a limitation to have an optimum at 180 to 210. Uh, the next step was to design a small scale pilot dryer and to demonstrate the, the high energy efficiency even at small scale. So we, we set on a capacity of 100 kilograms of product per hour and then an adjustable length of 15 to 35 meters, an adjustable air velocity. Uh, this is a a diagram of the of the dryer that we developed and installed at Sigat. So we we found the same uh, key elements with the hot air generator, feeding system, a drying pipe, and then the the cyclone and the exhaust blower. Uh, those are illustrations of the constructions and the different parts: the pipe, the cyclone to the to the left, uh, the feeding system uh, on the top right. Uh, the installation, uh, the, all the parts tested before, inst uh, before installation, and the installation was back in 2017. Uh, here is an illustration of the adjustable length of the, of the flash dryer. So the first uh, test showed that uh, under optimum conditions, the consumption of this uh, dryer was about three to four kilograms of gas uh, per hour, uh, meaning a cost of uh, $4 per hour or $0.04 per kilogram of product. Uh, that is $40 per, per, per ton of, uh, of product. The energy used was similar to large scale wires, which confirmed for the first time that it's possible to achieve high energy efficiency for small scale wires. Uh, yeah, those are illustrations. I will, I will pass quickly, but this, uh, this is an illustration of the, of the feeder. Uh, it's quite important to, to ensure a consistent feed and regular feed into the, into the, the dryer. Uh, in particular, to have uh, a system to disaggregate the particles, to make the particles as small as possible as they enter into the, the drying pipe. In this case, we use a, a cage mill to break down the, the lumps uh, into a finer program. Uh, the results of the first trials, we, we tested the uh, different conditions. Uh, here, I, we, we select nine uh, optimum conditions or near optimum conditions. And uh, in most cases, we achieved uh, similar energy efficient efficiencies as the large scale. The large, large scale uh, efficiency is shown uh, with the red bar here. And most of the trials achieved of the trials uh, achieved something similar between 1,500 and 2,000 uh, megajoules per ton of, uh, of product. Uh, we also did trials of cassava flour. Uh, here, I want to show in particular the effect of the length of the pipe. So, uh, under similar conditions, the same air velocity, uh, similar temperature, uh, similar feed rates. Uh, when we increase the pipe length from 19 meters to 26 meters to 32 meters, the output moisture decreases uh, from 18% to 15% down to 11%. So this, this shows the, the effect of the, of the residence time. At 19 meters and 26 meters under those conditions, we, we don't have uh, enough time inside the, the pipe. The, the residence time is too short. So the flower doesn't have enough time to dry and comes out uh, still too wet with too much water inside. Uh, only when we increase the 32 meters uh, do we have do we have enough time or do we leave enough time for the flower uh, in the drying pipe to, to completely dry and to uh, reach 11 percent that is below the, the optimum 13 percent uh, moisture content for the final product. Uh, with those results and considerations, we developed guidelines uh, for the, 
to, to define the operating conditions and to design flash dryers. Uh, for example, for 1.4 hectons of product per day, uh, everything starts from uh, the required capacity, which depends on the quantity of cassava roots available uh, in the surrounding area. So if we want, for example, 1.5 tons of, uh, of product per day, that means we need uh, between five and six tons of, uh, of fresh roots per, per day. Uh, we need uh, enough heat to, to dry the, the product. So if we want an air temperature uh, around 180 Celsius and uh, air starts to show between nine and 12 kilogram per kilogram, we need an air flow to carry uh, enough energy to up 0.5 kilogram per second. Uh, we need to keep the particles moving. So we need a minimum air velocity of 10 meters per second. So this defines the power of the, of the blower. Uh, and so on. Okay, I will I will go quickly on those uh, design guidelines and stick to the main conclusion. So, after demonstrating the the high efficiency of the pilot dryer, we started to uh, to transfer the technology and the innovations uh, to the private sector. Uh, we we had uh, we. We had the, the pleasure and honor to, to work with various uh, partners in the private sector that I want to, to greet uh, today. Uh, the key findings is that uh, we need a long drying pipe. Uh, between 25 and 30 meters are recommended. So this is being implemented uh, in Congo, in, uh, in different, uh, different factories in Congo, and also in, uh, in Nigeria at the moment. Uh, the recommended air velocity is 10 to 12 meters per second. That means uh, for the, the power for the blower uh, should be between 7 and 8 kilowatts uh, in the case of a negative pressure system and between 11 to 13 kilowatts uh, in the case of a positive pressure system uh, for production capacity between 200 and 300 kilograms of flour per hour. So this is also being implemented in, uh, in different factories in uh, both in Congo and, uh, and in Nigeria. Uh, another key finding uh, for improving flash dryers is the heating system and the heat exchanger. Uh, several uh, current heat exchangers have a low uh, exchange capacity and uh, cannot, or cannot transfer all the heat generated by the burner uh, to, the, to the air for drying. So uh, we also, uh, developed a new design of heat exchanger uh, with a counter current flow. The, the principle is to have the fumes from the burner circulating in one direction and the uh, fresh air going to the dryer in uh, the opposite direction this way. And then to have a series of, uh, of uh, chickens and thin pipes to have the maximum possible exchange of, uh, of heat from the fumes from the burner into the, the fresh air. Uh, we also used relators to increase the, the turbulence of the, of, the, uh, of the fumes, to slow down the fumes so there is more time and so to transfer heat to the fresh air. Uh, this, uh, those improvements have resulted in uh, energy savings uh, between 30 and 50%. So cutting the, the consumption of fuel by between 30 and 50%. Uh, here are uh, examples of the new model of, uh, of the heat exchanger being installed, uh, both in different factories in, uh, in Congo and in Nigeria. So uh, the key design criteria for efficient fire dryer, uh, the tube length. So the, the current models at uh, small scale have length between seven to 12 meters. <clears throat> the recommended upgrade is between 25 to 30 meters. The air speed, uh, current models are between three to five uh, meters per second. And the recommendation is to increase to 10, uh, between 10 and 12 meters per second. And the heat exchanger, uh, at the moment, the current models have an efficiency of 60%. That is 60% of the energy uh, from the fuel is transferred to the, to the hot air. 
and this can be upgraded uh, to reach between 80 to 90 percent. Uh, another recommendation is to insulate the, the drying tube uh, whenever possible to, to reduce the, the heat losses during operation. Uh, in summary, uh, so the, the main achievement of the project was to redesign uh, flash dryer uh, through the different steps that, uh, that I've just discussed. Uh, the key findings and, uh, and the, the tools uh, for designing more efficient flash dryers are collected uh, on this website. Uh, the opportunities uh, of those innovations are to reduce energy costs and uh, therefore production costs and also at the same time to increase uh, production capacity. Uh, in, the, in the primary or early results, we observe uh, increasing production capacity between 20 to 50 percent. Uh, I wanted to mention some related innovations uh, that are also important to optimize the, the whole factory and to minimize production costs. So uh, in terms of rating, uh, to produce smaller particles that are easier to, to dry. Uh, the, the the watering and pressing before before drying is also important to remove as much water as possible uh, before going into the dryer. Uh, another point that can be explored is to uh, to introduce renewable energy uh, to to reduce uh, also energy costs because the biomass uh, renewable energy is cheaper than uh, conventional fuel and to reduce uh, environmental impact. The dryer uh, can also be used for other products, uh, possibly from other roots and tubers and other, other flower, flower starch products. Uh, I will stop here. Uh, thank you. And uh, we can move to the next presentation. Yes. Thank you so much, uh, Thierry. Uh, I know that you have a lot of questions. Uh, Please write your question in the chat box. We have um, a discussion, a round table section, this uh, after the coffee break. So this is the opportunity to, to discuss with these points with uh, our panelists. Uh, okay, we continue with the presentation of Dr. Makua. Dr. Makua Shu Ojide. Uh, the topic is processors experience in the use of flash dryer for cassava derivative products in Nigeria. Please, Dr. Makua. You're welcome to this session. My name is people contributed to this work. You're welcome to this session. My name is Marco Achukwojide. I work as a lecturer in Alex Ekweme Federal University, Ndofa Alike in Ebonyi State, Nigeria. I am in economics and development study department. I worked in this um, project as a consultant, um, looking at the socioeconomic um, aspects of the work. And one of the things we tried to do is to do a study capturing the processor's experience in the use of flash dryer for cassava derived products in Nigeria. Um, people contributed to this work. So the names of the authors and their institutions of um, affiliations are also listed in this slide. Um, they, they, their contributions are sincerely acknowledged with um, much thanks. The presentation is um, straightforward. The outline is as stated. We look at introduction, theoretical framework, the method we applied, and results from the The introduction, okay, um, research has actually shown that in Nigeria, about 157 cassava processors invested in the first generation of flash dryer between the year 2006 and 2016. Um, by the way, the first generation flyers 
are those um, flyers fabricated before the first innovation to improve the efficiency of a um, heat exchanger. Now, the aim of this study is basically to examine the experience and the perception of end users of flash dryers in Nigeria. But specifically, we looked at um, the, the things listed here to determine the proportion of flash dryers still being used by processors and the frequency of use as well as the reasons for non-usage of um, these flash dryers. We also examine the processors and perception of the performance of the flash dryer. We try to ascertain the willingness of these processors to pay for improvement of their current dryers in terms of um, improvement in terms of drying and the uh, energy efficiency you know, of the, 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 the existing flash dryers they have. Um, we looked at um, a, a little of theory, you know, we looked at, um, we adopted the technology acceptance model, which is actually derived from theory of reasonable action, you know, that um, states that individuals or firms, their perception has a lot to do with their behavior towards adopting or otherwise a technology. You know, we, they, they, they are stated in the diagram here, the perceived usefulness of the technology and then the, the perceived ease of use of the technology are two key motivation, you know, to, that, that determine whether an individual or a firm will ad adopt a particular technology. We also acknowledge the fact that there are some external variables, external forces, influence, a kind of exogenous variables affecting this perception, you know, of um, the, the processors or the potential adopters of um, the technology. Now, the survey um, studied with three enumerators and myself were involved in this study. You know, I worked as the supervisor of the survey, but I also participated actively in the field. Um, before the survey, we did a training using a kind of back approach method. First, each of us had to study the questionnaire, you know, in, in details. After that, we did a kind of um, visitation. We visited two organizations that um, have flash dryer to familiarize ourselves with the components and the operations of this equipment. First, we visited, the first firm we visited, we had um, a processor who was in charge and then um, she walked us through the process they use, you know, what they do from beginning to the end with the flash dryer and then their expectations and then um, where they may be having hitches and all of that. In the second firm, we had an engineer who also walked us through the process of um, operating a, 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 a flash dryer. So basically we got orientation from a processor's view and then um, a technical view. After that, we now discussed in details the questionnaires and then agreed on the interpretation of each of the questions. The survey was done in November and December between November 15th and December 19th in 2019 and uh, between November 15th and then December 9 in 2019. That was when this survey was now multi-stage um, sampling with a um, slow uh, snowball technique was used. How? We had the target population. We are looking at cassava and starch processors who have flash dryer whether it's functional or not. And then we got the lists of um, people who had this uh, machine um, from IITA. We also got from Firo in Lagos. We equally got the list from agricultural development pro programs in the states in question. So with, the, with this list that formed a, a kind of um, um, framework, um, so, uh, uh, survey framework, we, we went into the field, but we discovered that some of the locations stated where you 
you can't find any processor there. So what we are doing is that we once we get a, a particular processor who has flash dryer, after interacting with the person, we try to find from that person other available flash dryers within the state and in the other states where we are covering. So that was helping us and on the on the whole we were able to identify 41 firms using flash dryers and which we interviewed. So what we are going to present here in the result are our findings from processors. The chart you are seeing is the distribution of um, the locations of these processors. We use the um, GPS um, machine to capture their GPS coordinates and that was what helped us to design this map. In Huara State, you know, you, you see a lot of them clustered around here. And then in Oyo State, you see a lot of them clustered around here. O Oshun State too. Then we looked at um, Ogun State and Lagos State. Okay. Now, the, the results of the survey. Majority of the respondents actually adopted, you know, started the use of, um, started using flash dryer between um, 2000, the year 2002 and 2010. That's about 57% of them. 11% um, started using it between 2000, between 1993 and 2001. While the rest, uh, about 32% um, <coughs> started using it between the year 2011 and um, 2019. Okay, so it invariably is as though this technology started gaining popularity in Nigeria in the year 1993. Okay, now we also found out that majority of them have a um, small scale machine, you know, below 10 tons per day. That's about 87 of them indicated that that's the capacity. 89 of them indicated that that's the capacity they have. Those who have between 10 um, to 100 tons per day capacity, you know, were about 11%. We couldn't um, identify anyone that is more than 100 tons of floor or, or starch per day in the area we studied. Okay. Um, now we looked at the number of flash dryers or dryers owned by processors. Many of them have only one flash dryer. That's about 58.5% have only one flash dryer. And then out of that, only 50% of this of, of these dryers are, are, we are still being in use as of the time of this survey and this has a lot of implication when a, a processor has only one flash dryer if there is downtown period you know i mean um, the, the, the machine breaks down invariably he can't do anything because there is no standby machine as an alternative you know two of them you know had them two of them had in, in those who have two, about 31% or 32% of them. And then 50% of them also indicated that these machines they have are no longer working. You know, now we have some firm, you know, that had three machines. And then the three machines they have, you know, are not working they are not functional at all okay and it is the so they're not functional then um few other firms have um four machines um i want to say specifically that the one that has two machines at two firms we found out two processors have three flash dryers that we are not working you know and then uh, two firms have four flash dryer one was using all why three um was um using why the other three firms was using three machines you know uh, 
why the other firm one was using all of them why the other firm was using only um, three out of the four okay coming to state distribution we looked at the total number of processors within the states in Quara State, we identified five of them you know these five we identified the percentage of those who are still using the the machine as of the time of the survey we are 20 percent you know then in lego states we identified four pro uh, three processors uh, 33 percent invariably one was found using the the machine out of the three of them then in ogun state we identified 14 machine you know uh, 14 processors at uh, these 14 processors um 57 of, of, of them were still working and then in Ocean State, we identified five processors. 40% of them were still working. In Oyo State, we identified um, 13 processors. And 61% of them were still um, working as of the time of this um, survey. So um, coincidentally, in, in um, Oyo State and Ogun State, where we got the highest number, of um, machines, uh, um, flash dryers, um, <coughs> um, in, in the two states, two, two, eight, eight of the machines were found working in each of um, Ogun State and Oyo State. Okay, the distribution of the flash dryer usage um, is captured in this graph here. Um, some of them we are using daily, some we are operating weekly, and some we are <laughs> like operating monthly. You know, you see few green um, buttons here and there, uh, there are quite few operating monthly. Then occasionally when there is demand, some of them we on their machine service it and, and, and work, then those in, in red buttons are not using anymore their machines we try to find out why these machines are no more in use um you know greater number of them about 22.5 percent said is basically on demand when they have contract maybe a a, a mill or somewhere contact them and say look can you help me produce this tone and then they, they go back to business. Then um, no demand at all for the machine account for 20% of um, non-use or occasional use of um, the machine. And then low, low demand, according to some people, about 15% of them, you know, basically because of low demand, they are not producing. But then this this number in red here, 15 percent also say the cost of production is high and they associated it with the cost of firing heat exchanger and it is too high for them. And because of that, they, they, it's difficult to break even a few of them say this management challenge um, people who are working and managing it for them. We are not doing well about 5% and 5% also uh, attributed it to power generator challenge. You know, um, some few of them said their machines are outdated. They can't use it anymore. Some said, okay, the machine needs to be renovated before they can work with it. Um, there was this particular firm that said the heat exchanger keeps damaging all the time once they want to use it and they hit it they fire it the the heat exchanger will break down and then few of them say their challenge is actually um availability of um cassava um tuba we try to look at the source of um energy for the machines available and then the distributions can be seen on the slide where a lot of them basically use diesel then some of them use a combination of um used no. oil called black oil in most cases with kerosene or petrol some use only no, no, used no. oil 
some organizations who rely on wood as a source of heating the you know, supplying energy to the heat exchanger yeah um, few others are using electricity some are using cuisine and then uh, liquid fire gas for heating and firing heat exchange now the the feeding method and discharging method we found in the machines are available the distributions are stated in the table many of them are manually um, fed into the machine and manually discharged you know and then like here about 79 percent are manually fed why um, 67 percent are discharged manually uh, excuse me now the processor's perception of the performance of the flash dryer is also another area of um, interest for us so we tried to ask them to rank certain indices you know on a scale of um, one to five where one is the lowest and then five is the highest you know to get a, a fair knowledge of their perception on um, some of those um, indices we we, re we reviewed you know as indicated in the table about um, 71 percent of the flash dryers were ranked high or very high in terms of um, um, drying efficiency but it's also important to note that this drying efficiency here is in the context of a processor you know that is basically interested in you know trying to find if the product has sufficiently dried after passing through the you know the cyclone you know even though the cost of um, firing the heat exchanger may be high this is on in, in contract with um, a typical process pro, uh, process engineer who want to calculate um, drying efficiency uh, as to mean uh, optimizing energy consumption and products you know costs you know but that was not we're not looking at it in terms of um, the engineering efficiency we are looking at it basically from the view of a processor what do you think so they said okay the drying is fine and then a good number of them also say that the drying it, it dries uniformly the product but when it comes to costs they indicated that the cost is also relatively high for them you know you see a good number of them scoring costs you know quite high here you know um on the average if you check average points to the highest points here you see many of them are skewed towards that area then whether the product the overall quality of the final product where well, they said is good you know in terms of labor um the cost of labor is not too high you know but but it, it, it still means a lot for them because many of them are you know using this manual method of feeding and discharging so they will need a good number of people to stand by to work on the machine then in terms of um, cost of energy we see a greater number of them indicated that is high you know about 51 percent of them indicated that um, the cost of energy is um, high for them okay then um, profitability um is almost like um what you call it um normally distributed some say it is not profitable majority of them are the middle you know where a good number of them say it is not profitable some say it is quite profitable if then the, the needful are done if they have the some of the consigns in questions are handled okay now who are the major buyers of a um, high quality cassava floor from the people we interviewed and um, most of them um, sell to floor mill processors or owners you know and because they constitute about 44 percent of them um, their um, oh, excuse me, when you... of their their buyers you know some of them we are actually um trying to say that most of these um flour millers have a way of this determining the price for them you know so and when they determine the price it becomes difficult for them to bargain a few of them say directly to baking industry 
um, that's about 22% of them to break in industry. The ethanol or related industries um, constitute about 9.5% of their uh, customers. The pesta and noodles industry, about 4%, and, and that way, the pharmaceutical are not too much um, um, their clients. Uh, customers um, in terms of high quality cassava flour. We tried to find out the average cost. So we decided to look at the machines produced between or purchased between 2016 and 2019. We identified 10 of them from the survey we did because in each case we're asking the processors how much they spent in producing or purchasing each of the machines they have. So we took um, an average of 10 of them that we have produced within this period. And we found out that the mean cost is about 7.8 million, which is roughly about 21,000 um, or 21,680 um, 21, US dollars. Now, with a standard deviation of about um, to uh, almost three million, so plus or minus um, three million to seven million, we give you a range of what it costs to produce um, a, 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 a sizable flash dryer within this period in Nigeria. Now, I needed to note that. The, the costing we use here, we didn't calculate the net present value of these machines to know the costs of um, 2016, how is it reflected in the year 2019. We didn't do that. We also did another assumption. We didn't consider the size and the configuration. We just assumed them to be the same. What we basically wanted to find out is to have a fair knowledge of what it costs to produce a, a, a medium size flash dryer within the period. So we have about six, I mean about eight million Naira to produce a medium size of um, the flash dryer within that period. We then ask them questions on the findings. If they will be willing to pay for an improvement, we ask the processor, will you be willing to pay for an improvement of your existing flash dryer if the improvement we bring about um about 40 percent increase or improve, improve improvement on the drying and energy efficiency of the machine if it is possible to improve the drying and energy energy efficiency of the machine by 40 percent will you be willing to pay for such kind of adjustment 41 of them said yes, we'll be willing to pay. 59% said no, we are not willing to pay for such adjustments. We'll, we'll discuss uh, below the reason why the 59% said they are not willing to pay. Now, those who are willing to pay, we asked them how much on the average will you be willing to pay? We took the average of the cost. We, we discovered that they were, you know, in the, they will be willing to pay in the neighborhood of uh, 2 million naira um, 2 million naira or 2.3 million naira to have this adjustment now those of them who are willing to pay 2.3 million naira uh, meanwhile, uh, meanwhile this is about um, uh, 6,615 US dollars those of them who are willing to pay this amount we then did a kind of scenario analysis uh, you see it in the next slide we ask them if this amount you are willing to pay is higher by 20%. In other words, the amount we identified in the last slide, about 2.3 million, if it is higher by 20%, that is about an, an addition of 476,000 naira. That's roughly about 1,300 US dollars. If such adjustment will require a, something higher than what they initially offered, would they still be willing to pay? 
16% or roughly 17% say no, we'll not be willing to pay anymore. We'll leave the game. That's out of the 41%. In, in the 41% who say they are willing, 16% said no, we'll no longer be willing to pay. So we're left with about 83% who said yes, we are willing to pay if the increment, uh, if the improvement is higher than by 20%. Now, the 83% of them who indicated willingness to pay for such wow. improvement, if it is higher than 20%, we now ask them, what if the improvement is rather higher, the cost of such adjustments is rather higher by 50%, not 20 Will you still be willing to pay? If it is higher than by, by 50%, that will amount to about additional 1.1 million Naira to cost adjustment in the existing machine. So when we ask that question, clearly 58% of them said, no, we will no longer be willing to pay. We wouldn't pay for that one. And then 25% said they will be willing to pay for it. Okay, this is a kind of scenario analysis. And this is important because um, for someone who already has a machine, that has most of the you know, structures, he may rather prefer to improve on what he has to continue in his business than installing a new one altogether. Okay, so it's important we Now, for those of them who said they are not willing to pay, um, some of them said for them to make such investment decision, they need to see evidence they need to see a machine where this improvement has been demonstrated you know for some of them their concern is that um, there is need to demonstrate the efficiency and profitability of such improvement you know the profitability is key for them then for some others they are concerned about the current price of high quality cassava you know cassava flour you know in in nigeria and if even if you improve on the machine and the price is not um, enough to help them break even then it is not important investing in it few others said well nigerian government has been emphasizing on the need to expand the use of cassava in in nigeria and using it to substitute the the wheat importation you know and if indeed that policy is correct they should be willing to reduce the cost of such investment for them by providing a kind of subsidy. And then for some others, the, their main challenge is that the, the cost of production, you know, for heat exchanger is still high and any such um, improvement that can actually reduce that cost will um, help them make a, an investment decision. Okay. Now, in this study, um, we submitted two key recommendations. One is that there is need to train machine fabricators in Nigeria on how to produce energy and cost efficient small scale flash dryer. This is important um, because um, it will go a long way bringing more people into the industry the second is that the the in the, the the people interviewed desired to see the designing and commercialization of flash dryer that can be mounted on mobile truck for farm gates processing they believe that if such machine is available it will go a long way to reduce the to reduce the post harvest losses experienced as a result of transporting perishable and bulky uh, cassava roots from the farm to the site. That if such machine is available uh, during harvest, you can move it to the site, proceed it to a certain extent where you can return um, the 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 thing to the site to finish up the process. So these are the two key recommendations we submitted at the end of the study. I want to especially thank 
the founder of this study, CGIAR Trust Fund, for funding the study. You know, we also want to acknowledge the support we received from staff of the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture. We equally appreciate the support we received from the staff of Federal Institute of Industrial Research, you know, um, Oshodi Firu in Lagos State. We equally appreciate the support from the staff of the university where I work, Alex Ekweme Federal University in Dofo Alike in Ebony State. We appreciate um, the support we also received from the staff of Agricultural Development Program in the state where we conducted the study. And for those of you who are participating in this program, we want to thank you for your time. We thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Merci. I want to return back to the coordinator. Thank you for allowing me this time. Take Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Makua. Now we're going to have a coffee break for 10 minutes. Dr. Thierry? Yes. Uh, thank you, everyone, for, uh, for listening, for the very interesting presentations. Uh, I think we can have a break here for a bit less than 10 minutes, and we, we can meet at uh, 5 before the hour. That is, uh, it is 15, uh, 3, 3.55 p.m. Uh, West African time. Five to the hour. If you have questions, please uh, write them in the in the chat, and we will uh, address them uh, in the next session uh, during the round table. Federica, mm -hmm. yes, what are you doing? Do what you asked me to do. Um, I would like to start. The first question is for uh, Dr. Nzola. It is a question from uh, in French from Constantine Kabadian Devi. He would like to ask where it's possible to find this kind of equipment in Congo, Kinshasa, to guide uh, potential uh, interested entrepreneur to, to find the required equipment. Uh, so over to you, Dr. Zola. Uh, if you can be very brief in your, question, in your answers, because uh, we have many questions and we will try to address as many as possible. Thank you. Dr. Zola. He, he may have left us. Yeah, it seems he's no longer here. Okay. Um, yeah, but okay. I, I think I can take that. Um, Agrimac. Agrimac is in Kinshasa um, at the industrial center, industrial area. Uh, I'm not very sure if I know the specific name of this area, uh, but what I will request our colleague who asked this question to do is to uh, visit IITA in Kinshasa or send us an email. Would uh, get you across to uh, Mr. Mamadou, the managing director of Agrimac. He's been making uh, this uh, flash drive uh, design now in the past uh, two years. So, so you are in a very safe hand if you want to buy one. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Abbas. And I have a related question for Dr. Bola. This comes from Dr. Salisu. And he, uh, she wants to know about uh, the source of fresh dryer in Ogun State in, uh, in Nigeria, uh, particularly to make uh, uh, gari, uh, for gari production. Uh, so this <laughs> is the first question for Dr. Bola. And I have another question from Dr. Bola. Is from Kelly uh, Wanda. 
he is wondering when you mentioned that the consumption is a 13 liters per hour, whether this is a diesel or petrol or which other uh, source of, uh, of energy. And, uh, and he's also wondering why you push drying to five to 7% while the product standard usually requires a 12 or 14% um, uh, wet content. So Dr. Bola, I hope you are there. You can address these two questions. Dr. Bola, are you with us? Dr. Ashiro. Dr. Ashiro, you need to unmute if you are there. Otherwise, Dr. Adegbite can take the question if he is not on seat. Hmm. He, he may have connection problem. Okay. Can anyone address this question? Where to find? Perhaps Abbas again. Perhaps uh, uh, you are in a good position to answer this question. Where to find the fresh dryers in Ogun? Uh, whether the fresh dryers were that were mentioned by uh, Dr. Bora were using diesel or petrol and why they push the dry the drying so much? Okay, I, I probably would not be able to answer the second question. Um, but uh, the first question, uh, where to get flash dryer in Ogun State? I believe that's the question. Yes. Or there is a particular question in, I mean, particular flash dryer in Ogun State that um, our colleague is interested in. Um, Flash dryers are being made by several equipment fabricators in Nigeria. So it's possible to get flash dryer um, uh, from the fabricators who are in Lagos and um, Oyo State and other places. Uh, again, I will request that uh, you send us an email and then we'll direct you uh, to equipment fabricators, those who are making good flash dryers. But I must mention that flash dryers are not designed for Gary processing. Flash dryers are not designed for Gary processing. The, the dryers are designed for drying flowers uh, from different commodities as well as starch. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think it's pretty much a matter of particle size in that case. Um, I, I have two questions very much related. Uh, is uh, uh, Dr. Wafiu? Hello, please. Can you repeat the question you want me to attend to? I've unmuted. Um, Dr. Bola, uh, there is a question for you about your presentation. When you mention 13 liters per hour consumption, are you referring to diesel or to petrol? And it's diesel. They are diesel, thank you very much. And uh, they and Kerry was also wondering why uh, the drying process was pushed to achieve a five to seven percent moisture content when usually product standards require 12 or 14 percent. Actually, in the presentation, I said it's automated and can be adjusted to achieve either low or high capacity, depending on what we want. Actually, the, the figure you see is another ideal figure. When we finish, we do the testing. That was the result of the test, which was published. Now, as an entrepreneur for commercial production, from the control panel, you can control the fuel intake, you can control the feeding rate, and then you can control a lot of factors, the temperature of drying and so on, to be able to achieve either monitor content you want or capacity you want. That one is just an RID uh, evaluation. Thank you very much, Dr. Boga. So now I, will, I think Thierry might be able to answer the next two questions that are related. The first one is about what is the most economical heat source, uh, whether this is organic waste or diesel or kerosene or black oil. And the other question is from Miss Hong. They ask again, what is the heat source for the heat exchanger in the improved fresh dryers? What would you recommend? Okay, thanks. Thanks for the question. Uh, th there is the, the issue of costs and the issue of availability. Uh, at, at the moment, diesel is, uh, is a fairly good compromise. It's 
not too expensive and it's uh, readily available and easy to, to transport and to distribute. And it's, it seems to be uh, one of the most widely used uh, type of fuels. Uh, there, are, there is also use of uh, black oil, uh, which is uh, used uh, vehicles oil, uh, sometimes blended with kerosene, uh, and another type of uh, fossil fuel, uh, which is uh, cheaper than, uh, than diesel. Than diesel. Uh, other fuels are less expensive, for example, biomass, uh, biomass fuel uh, can be less uh, expensive. However, uh, their availability, it's, it's easy to, to find them and to, to have access to them. And also they, they require uh, a different type of burner, uh, which is maybe less easy to, or less available than the conventional uh, diesel uh, or black oil uh, burners. Uh, and another type of fuel which might be interesting and uh, of similar price as diesel is the gas uh, LPG, liquefied uh, petroleum mm -hmm. gas. Uh, however, uh, in terms of distribution and availability, it's the, the network of distribution is not as good as, uh, as diesel uh, so far in, uh, in many countries. So, it, it, the, the type of fuel uh, to use uh, really depends on the price, but also on the availability in the in the zone where, where you want to produce flour. Uh, Thank you very much, Thierry. Then I grouped three questions because uh, they are more related to, let's say, the research component and you know marginal improvements. So the first one is the, again from uh, Dr. Uh, Wazio uh, Awoyare. When he's asking whether it's feasible to get a laboratory scale fresh dryer for experimental purpose and which can be installed inside the laboratory, specifically for experiments on the production of OG, power, starch, fufu flour, and HQCF. The other question is about what software have been used for simulation and analysis of the fresh dryer and whether you plan any training on that. And finally, whether the design of the improved heat exchanger is available as open source. So who wants to take this question? Uh, Thierry, Alejandro, who wants to take this question? The first one is about the feasibility of having laboratory scale fresh dryer. The second is about the software for the simulation and whether there is a training schedule for that. And finally, whether the design of the heat exchanger is publicly available. Maybe Arno. Yes, yeah. thank you. Uh, so uh, about the lab scale flash dryer, I think the, um, the dryer we built in, uh, in Colombia at SIAT, which is around, which produces an, around 50 kilo to 100 kilo per hour of of starch or flour is uh, the, 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 the smallest uh, size we can do because it's, uh, if, you, if you want to, to, to build a smaller dryer, you will have issues with uh, feeding systems and things like this. And, and I think it's more or less the, the smaller size we can do. And, and even another problem is that as you need a very long pipe, like 20 to 30 meters, uh, it's not really a, a, la, a lab scale. Yeah. Um, uh, then the other question about the programming and the simulation. Uh, the initial program was uh, done under MATLAB. It's a, uh, a specialized uh, scientific uh, programming environment. But the program has also been uh, translated into other languages, uh, including C and uh, uh, the, the program is actually available online as uh, on the website. Alejandro showed that uh, you can go to a simulation platform that is on the on CIRAD website and which is directly uh, using the, the flash dryer program uh, in C++ uh, language. And was there and a last question? The heat exchanger is the design is uh, publicly available. 
of course everything is publicly available you can find everything on the website and i will talk uh, about it uh, in little more detail tomorrow thank you very much arno uh mr abdul latif sadiq is asking uh, how many cyclone types of fresh dryers present the optimum in terms of raw material and other variable input and output so how many cyclones would you recommend who wants to pick perhaps this is for alejandro you want to answer this question are you the right person or all right take it again <laughs> sure okay uh, uh cyclone the, the number of cyclone is only a matter of uh processing capacity if you have a small dryer uh, let's say from up to 200 300 kilos per hour of, of uh, flour uh one one cyclone will be will be enough then the, the this, of course the size of the cyclone changes with the with the with the drying capacity and and uh, for uh, higher capacities, let's say above uh, 500 kilos per hour, you, you may need uh, two or three cyclones in, in parallel. Actually, they are working in parallel because if you, were, uh, if you want to do only one cyclone, you will get a cyclone that would be uh, two meters in diameter. So that's not uh, easy to build and it's easier to uh, separate the flow and have uh, several cyclones working in parallel. Thank you very much, Arno. I think we are running out of time, but uh, uh, the presentation from Professor Ojide raised several uh, uh, comments and questions that I want to share with all of you. Uh, the first uh, is uh, Mr. Allen K uh, points out that the cost of buying a new fresh dryer in Nigeria has doubled from the cost presented. This still further deprive many serious enterprises from partaking in the business. And then he also asks a follow-up question is, what efforts have been done to reduce the cost of fresh dryer, uh, I guess fresh dryer manufacturing, as, uh, as it is presently? And, uh, and, and uh, Mr. Ali Ojutiku asks also, who is going to pay for these improvements and what support can be done to help fabricators to retrofit and upgrade their uh, equipment. Um, Thierry, you want to pick these questions? Yes, uh, I, can, uh, I can give elements uh, of answers. Uh, the, the, the flash dryer remains uh, a fairly expensive equipment. Uh, it requires uh, uh, stainless steel, uh, which is an expensive material. In particular, when it needs to be imported, which is the case for, for many countries. So, depending on uh, on the cost of raw materials, the cost of imports, uh, the cost of labor in different countries, we we estimate the the price of a fresh drying system to between twenty thousand to forty fifty thousand uh, dollars. There, there's a lot of variations because of the of the importation uh, issues. And, and labor cost uh, issues. So, depending on the, the, the production capacity and uh, the, the country, it, it's difficult to reduce the price below 20 to 25,000 uh, dollars. Uh, on, on average, I would say you, you need a budget of between 30,000 to 40,000 uh, dollars. Uh, However, if you already have a, a flash dryer installed, which is not being used, it's, it's possible, uh, if, 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 if it's in good condition, it's possible to refurbish it for a, for a lower cost. Uh, as to uh, something to, to cover the cost of uh, installing a new dryer or uh, refurbishing a dryer, uh, at the moment, I'm not aware of any program to, to cover this. Uh, what what uh, the RTB project can offer is uh, technical support, uh, technical advice on how to on, on the design of the dryer, but we are not able to support about the engineering aspect, construction, refurbishment uh, aspect. This may Thank need you. to be supported with government support or bank, or private uh, funding by banks and other sources of uh, capital. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Thierry, and, and all presenters. I think we have uh, addressed all questions, but there is a comment that really struck me. Again, to the presentation of Professor Ojide by Dr. Sarisu, and this very short comment, uh, they ask, these results are pathetic, as I can see more red dots on the map. So for people that have been working on fresh dryers in Nigeria for many years, this doesn't come as a surprise. We know that many fresh dryers were built and then they were basically disadopted. Uh, so if you allow me, I would like to conclude with a question of mine. My question is, uh, among the reasons of these adoptions that have been reported by the, during the presentation of Professor Ojide, uh, yes, there was uh, some uh, uh, of the response pointing out at the high cost of energy that you are rightly addressing. But uh, the major reason for this adoption was, uh, uh, seems to be the low demand of the final product, particularly HQCF. So my question is, besides the technological improvement to enhance energy efficiency of the fresh dryers. What else need to be done to uh, enhance the likelihood of adoption at scale of fresh dryers? Because a lot of your work is to take fresh dryers to other countries, but uh, how do we ensure that uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a given country, this technology actually spread and benefit as many people as possible? And these perhaps are beyond a poorly technological improvements, but there are other issues in the value chains that need to be addressed. So I would like to, if some of you can address this question, it's a bit broader than other questions, but I think you are doing quite impressive work, but what else needs to be addressed to ensure that the fresh dryers are adopted? Thank you. Thank you. Diego, can I? Oh, okay. Siri? Abbas, Dr. Abbas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you, uh, uh, Diego. Um, flash, the cost of flash dryer or the running of flash dryer is not the only cost that uh, goes into the total cost of uh, drying. The logistics of getting raw materials from the rural areas to the locations where most of these flash dryers are could actually be the significant cost. Um, at the beginning of the use of flash dryers by different processors, most of them put the flash dryers um, in the urban centers for several reasons, access to labor, electricity, and so on. Whereas the raw material, the fresh cassava itself, is right deep in the rural areas. In some of those places, they don't have good roads. So during the rainy season, it becomes more expensive to even bring the fresh cassava from those places to the processing center. And that is a major cost. That is a major cost. So that needs to be addressed. The other aspect is the cost of fresh cassava itself. Apart from transporting from the farm to the processing center, we still have to in, in, increase the productivity of cassava in order to reduce the cost of, of cassava per kg. Those two aspects are important. But there's something else we are beginning to advise those who are putting uh, flash dryers in different places to do some level of analysis of the costs of transportation and the cost of logistics, and then identify a location that is not so much at the uh, uh, center, I mean, urban centers, and not too rural. And this also need to do some analysis of availability of fresh cassava or sellable quantity of fresh cassava before they decide where to put the flash dryer. Uh, many people would put flash dryers in places where they already have their houses or plots of land and so on and so on. So those things are contributing to the total cost of using uh, flash dryers. Apart from the technical aspects, logistics, getting the raw materials, uh, th those things are so important. And just like we always say that someone who wants to build a house would start by calling experts to do the survey. A surveyor will come and do the survey, determine the size of the land. The next thing is to get a designer who would know the size of the building that can fit in. When someone is setting up a factory, that person should actually rely on experts to help in determining some of these things that we're talking about. I, I will stop there. Maybe tomorrow we'll have more, more time to discuss it. But these are the key key aspects of the value chain that need to be addressed in addition to the technical aspect of flash um, fabrication 
installation and uh, utilization. Thank you very much, Dr. Abbas. Uh, excellent uh, uh, answer. I think uh, looking at productivity and the cost of logistics is crucial to make this technology even more profitable. I have already run out of time, and I will hand over to Thierry or Alejandro for the closing remarks. Thank you very much to all participants for the excellent questions and comments. And apologies if I was not able to hand over to, um, to you to speak directly, but we would have uh, really exceeded too much time, the uh, allocated time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Diego. Excellent. Uh, so may, uh, may, maybe uh, a short comment about the adoption and this adoption of dryers. Uh, the, the, this project uh, focused on the technical aspects, and we have addressed uh, some of those imp important aspects. But at the scale of the value chain, yes, indeed, as you pointed out, and Dr. Abbas, uh, there are uh, economic aspects, social economic aspects that also uh, mean that in some countries the adoption is much more difficult than in other countries. And maybe we can develop this more tomorrow. Uh, for the moment, uh, we are uh, reaching the end of the first day of the, of the workshop. Uh, I want to thank uh, deeply uh, everyone who has participated, the, the presenters, uh, keynote speakers, all the participants, uh, the many questions and, and interests that, uh, that we have uh, to answer. Uh, I, I think it was a really uh, good session and a really uh, useful uh, exchange of, uh, of information. Um, for tomorrow, so we, we will send uh, a reminder email, but uh, it's the same link and the same time, so 2, 2 p.m. Uh, West Africa time, uh, for another session of two and a half uh, hours. Uh, we will have uh, a more technical presentation by Arno Shakti on, on the different technical aspects of the the flash dryer, another presentation on the social economics or economics viability uh, aspect by Alejandro. Uh, and then uh, an update uh, from Nigeria and from Congo about the, the development of or the, yeah, the, the development of the flash drying innovations in, the, in this country, followed by another uh, round table. Uh, so Again, uh, thank you, and uh, I'm looking forward to to seeing you again uh, for the second for the second day tomorrow. Uh, probably we other uh, other participants may want to add a word. Uh, I can leave the floor to Dr. Abbas, Dr. Asu, and then Arno and Alejandro, if uh, if you want. Thank you. Thank you very much, all. Bye-bye. Thank you, all. See you tomorrow. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Please Thank you. remember please remember to fill in the attendance form. The link is in the chat box. Thank you. Okay. So, Thank you. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Uh, we're gonna stop the the recording, right? Yeah, we can stop the recording, uh, but we can leave the the meeting open for a while. Okay. Uh, we continue recording the the meeting. I think it's okay. Uh, the discussions are are closed. By now. How, how was it, Federica? Yeah, okay. I